Reformed Church. You know, there is, I mean, you've seen, if you kind of go around shops and, you know, um, it could be almost any shop, even gas stations today have little, little balls and stuff that you can squish and little things for stress, right? And everybody's always looking for stress and yoga this and meditation that and um, just all kinds of ways to just kind of deal with one single problem, right? Which is just stress, right? People are just all stressed out and they're trying to find their inner whatever and they want to get into a peaceful place and it's all this stuff that's always trying to work towards making a better you, right? But, but the, the truth is though, that um, for believers, right, um, that obviously doesn't have to be like that, right? And the only the thing that causes really one of the biggest things of stress, which, which I think is it's probably, I'm not going to just say it categorically, but I think it's probably the, the single reason for stress really is that something happens and you feel a draw on your ability, Right? Because put it this way, if there was no, if you didn't feel a sense of draw on your ability, then there would be no stress, right? Because what do you care? <laughs> like, if, it's, if something's going on and drawing on the ability or the power of somebody else, like, why would that stress you? Then that's your business, right? But, but we stress because we feel a draw on our ability, right? If, if you did not sense that, if you didn't feel that something, that a circumstance was demanding a response from you, that a circumstance, and, and, and people talk about it like, you know, oh, it's just, just life, you know? Like, that's, just the way life is. You got to deal with stress and this stress and the stress of a job or the stress of being a parent or the stress of being a business owner or the stress of the economy or the stress, right? But they talk about all these things that cause stress because all these things demand on people, right? Demand a response from you, right? Um, if, the, if it's not a, a verbal response that it demands on you for your, your opinion, it demands a response on your ability, the job demands a response, right? And, and sometimes you can get even into this thing where, you know, like God demands a response and, and my job is demanding a response and, and, and my spouse demands a response and my kids and this responsibility and that one. So you, you, you get a sense like everything is demanding a response from your draw on your ability. When obviously, you know, th there are so many things that the Lord has been teaching us across the years about, about rest and all these things. And it's really not a, it, it was never intended to be a demand on our ability, right? But that's obviously, in Philemon, that's what he talks about. And, and I'll just read it to you real quick. It's, it's a verse that I think we all know that we're familiar with, right? But Philemon 1.6 says that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So... The reason why acknowledgement is so important is because when you, when you're just in any circumstance, right, and you really see the need of acknowledging the Lord in in everything that you do throughout your day, right? Because it, it's hard to imagine that there's anything going on in your day that's not a demanding a response. I mean, if you're at work, work is demanding a response for you. If you if you're spending time with your family, you may feel that there's something that demands a response, right? Like you, you have to do something for this one, do something for this one, do something for this one, do something for this one. So, so you, you, regardless of where you are, unless you're by yourself, and sometimes people say that they're, they're, they make more demand on themselves than other people do. I'm, I'm, I'm harder on myself than anybody else is. Well, then that throws that out the window because even by, when you're by yourself, you're pressuring yourself then. Uh, or, or thinking about what you should have said or how you should have responded or how you should have done that, right? So again, other people demanding a response from you and then you yourself even demanding a response from you. But the reality is that if you acknowledge the excessive power that we have on the inside of us, right? The, it, it's just excessive. It's, it's not even like, oh, it's enough for the circumstance or it's enough for the day, but what we have in Christ, in other words, God on the inside of us, right? He says, he says that the power right, that the power would be of God and not of us, right, that's in, uh, in 2 Corinthians 4, 7, he says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, right, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us, so, so what we want is that when the, the way we desire to live when we talk about this thing about walking in the spirit, right, is that when, when it doesn't matter what you're doing, whether it's your family or whether it's your job or whatever it is, when, when anything demands a response from you, you acknowledge Christ in you, right, because that's essentially what you want to happen. You want it to be God that responds with his ability and not you feeling all stressed out because this is requiring a response from me, right? Contrary to popular belief, you being a parent, right, it is, it is not your job 
right? And I, and I know obviously that goes contrary to everything that you probably feel in here, but your job of being a parent, right? Nobody can be a better parent than God will be to your kids, right? So when we lean on our own understanding, we make horrible decisions, right? But I mean, I, I, can, I, I can look back at the decisions, that so many decisions that I made as a parent, and I, and I can tell you a whole mess of them. Like it wouldn't be very hard for me to try to dwell on the past and try to remember all the bad decisions that I made as a parent. But with God, it's not like that, right? And we don't, we don't have to be going through the past to find all our mistakes. My point is that, that, that our life doesn't have to be lived that way. It, it, anytime anything wants to draw on your performance, let it be a draw on the power of God on the inside of you. You know, I, I've just been reading lately. I don't know really if it's, if it's related to that. I guess, you know, we'll see. But I've just been reading often, um, quite a number of times, that Samson keeps coming to my head, right? And, and, and it's interesting how the name of Samson's father is rest, right? It's Manoah. His name means rest, right? And, and you see that so many of the, well, put it this way, anything important that is written about Samson was a draw on the power of God. Like when he responded, he responded with the power of God, right? Even, even when it seems like something was a wrong decision, right? Like he went and actually got a wife from the Philistines. That, that's, that's where his heart went. But the Bible actually says that, but that was a God thing. It was actually the Lord doing that. Right? Because he, the Lord wanted an opportunity, an opportunity with the Philistines because the Israelites were under the dominion, it says, of the Philistines. But, but, but the thing is, you know, you realize all the things that he did. And again, it is an important thing to remember that, that his strength was not about physical strength. Like, honestly, he could have been the thinnest guy in Israel, and it really didn't matter because the power that he was exerting was definitely not it was not the power of men, right? It was the power of God. I mean, he would, he, he, he would fight against 30 men at one time, and he won every single time. I think it was with a, with a, with a jawbone of a donkey that he, he killed 30 men, right? It's just, it's just it, 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 you, you really picture, like, just, just for a second, stop and think about 30 men against one guy. There is no way. You could have you had 30 jawbones, and there's no way you're going to fight yourself out of being attacked by 30 men at one single time, right? It wasn't like they were taking turns like in the karate movies, like they could have just jumped them at one time. So, so the, the, his response was always by the power of God. So regardless of how we agree or disagree on some of his decisions and the things that were going through Samson's mind, the way they're seen or portrayed, you know, he moved by the power of God. So the draw that he felt, I mean, even coming out of a dead sleep, right? Coming out of a dead sleep, it was the power of God come, it would come upon him and he would work by the power of God. So it, it was, and he's mentioned in Hebrews 11, it was by faith that Samson did what he did, right? It's a, it's a time, where I, I believe that's where the, the, the note is, like, like time would not allow to kind of recount all of the things that were done by Samson, et cetera, Gideon, yada, yada, right? But, but the point that I'm trying to make to you is that th there is a way to live, right? I mean, we have examples, but the greatest example that we have is in the glory of Christ where he lives. He lives always walking, right? He, he's always walking by the Spirit of God. So, so, so the, one, the one thing that kind of came back to me, and I'll kind of stop here for you, but the one thing that came back to me while I was thinking about this was, um, in, and I'll find the verse for you, in, in Matthew 26, 41, it says that the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, right? And if you really look at that, what he's really saying there is that the Spirit is always ready, the, 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 and it's an important thing to know, right? The Spirit of God on the inside of you doesn't need like a ramp-up time to get ready, right? It doesn't have like a, like a power button that has to go from zero to 60 and then you're ready to kind of work, right? But the Spirit of God is always ready. It, it's, it's a matter of, of the acknowledge, right? Your, your mind being, being, being renewed in order to be able to allow the Spirit of God to be able to work in your life, right? In other words, that your, your thinking and your reasoning is not getting in the way, that you're not being short-sighted in what you have, but allowing the power of God to work. And, and the thing that you can see is that, that because of the fact that he's always ready to go, it, it's just a change of heart for us, right? To know, like this is, like if, if there was ever a reason for you to think like, oh, this is how this is how really the things of God can be in my life. Not, not just the way, the, the way I hear things at church or the way things can be on a Wednesday night, but the fact that when we're talking about just living, that you can actually live and walk that way, that you can work that way. Because a lot of times for Christians, when they think about working, 
they, they really honestly, they, they don't think about acknowledging the Spirit of God. To them, work is like, this is what I'm doing, or this is the best job that I can get, or this is the best that I can do. And it's kind of, when it's working, then that's it. The, what, you're, what you're doing presently is because that has to do with your education. It has to do with that's what you know, that's what you can do, and then that's it. And we limit ourselves that way because actually really working for us, like the day-to-day -day work, it's not, we don't really see that like that's God. Like that's just all me. Like, and that's, that's how you qualify yourself or disqualify yourself for a job because you say this is what I can do, this is the level of education that I have, that's it, right? But, but just imagine, though, a life, though, where we are learning to acknowledge the Lord in everything that we do. It, like, it, it, imagine the way life can be by actually acknowledging the exceeding greatness of the power of God on the inside of you, acknowledging him, obviously, as your truth, first and foremost, let it, letting him teach you, but then re re remembering, right, every good thing that you have in you in Christ. It's kind of like you, you have the good in Well, it's not kind of like. It's exactly like this, right? You have the good in you. And then you use the mediocre. <laughs> like, like why, would we even, why would we do that? Why would we live every single day, work with the mediocre? And it's not even mediocre, right? It's the part that doesn't work, <laughs> right? You, you use that which is, which is not workable, not fruitful. So we work with that every day. And then every once in a while, we think about the exceeding greatness of the power of God that we have in us when we're sick, right? But, but what about just every day, right? What about every single day? Every time the Philistines come, Right? The power of God is there every single time. Every time the Philistine, it, it, you could have been in a dead sleep, and you just wake up, your eyes still kind of kind of bloodshot, whatever, and you just get a boom, and the power of God is there. You just, you, you, your faith is in Jesus, right? You live, you know that this is the way you have to respond, that there is no other way. But when, I think when you get used to responding always in the flesh, right? You respond to something your boss tells you, in the flesh. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about your reaction. I'm talking about work. Your boss says, you have to do this. Okay, yeah, I know I got it. You think, okay, I think I understand. I think I can do it. Okay, yeah, I'll do it, right? That's, we respond with a carnal mind when our boss asks us to do something. We respond with a carnal mind when, when we have to, we're at a deadline. We respond with a, that's why when you, people say that sometimes, oh, I work better. I work definitely better with a deadline. Because you think like that's where you feel like all, all your juices flow and when you just got, you got a deadline and you got to go. Well, how about, how about if it wasn't a deadline that was pressuring you? And how about if you just even knew what to do even before you were asked to do it? How, how about that? How about knowing what to do before you even had to do it? Like how awesome things could be that way. Just walking by the Spirit of God and having a desire to do something and then having the power right behind it in whatever. Whether it's using a, a, a program, right, or whether, whether it's just physical work that you're doing at your job, right, that the power that you would say to yourself, you know what, Lord, in my life, I want the power to be of God and not of myself. My life, my, my every single day living, I want the power to be of, of you and not of me, right? I, I don't know, you know, in Samson's life kind of when, when that began, when exactly that started, like when he saw the, the, the strength of God working through him. But isn't it an interesting thing that it wasn't like when, 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 he, when his mother was given the promise and his dad was given the promise that he would be a Nazarite from birth, right? That he would be, that he would be basically set apart, right? The, the, what the Lord told them wasn't that he would be stronger than any man alive, right? I, don't, I actually don't remember reading that at all, that it would be just about his strength. But isn't it interesting that the way that the power of God manifested in him was with just brute strength, like every single time? And, and, and you think, well, is that, is that like what it was? Like Samson had the power of strength, and Gideon had the power of this, and the other one had the power of that? Right? If God was with him, God could have worked in any way. But there was something in the acknowledgment of Samson in just when it related to brute strength, when it had to do with coming against. I, like, I, I don't see this. And I'm not saying it's not there, but I don't see like this wisdom, like, right? Like I don't see the wisdom of Solomon, the way Samson is portrayed, but you see power, right? You see strength, you see brute strength coming from him, right? So, so it wasn't, you know that it had to do with how he viewed the Lord. It wasn't just, I mean, of course it was what 
the, what the Lord wanted accomplished, but the Lord could have accomplished the same thing through other means, right? Just through, just through wisdom, through, through, through entrapping the enemy in X number of ways, right? But instead with him, it was coming against him with brute strength. The Spirit of God would rise up on the inside of him. He would work that way. So imagine a life, though, where, you, where it's not just when you need strength. It's not just when you need to lift something, right? It's not, oh, if you've ever seen a mother with their child stuck under a car and they get the strength that comes upon them and they just lift up the car right because again we, we 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 have this carnal thinking that it has to be all of your adrenaline going and that's what makes your carnal body work right but how about if it doesn't have to be like that how about if we don't have to live in a way where it's about stressors and deadlines and that that would that in other words making yourself function making yourself work to your highest ability by by stressing your body or stressing your mind in order to produce that performance right how, how about it be easy right how about it be light? And how about, right, the Lord taught us that to enter into the power of God, to enter into salvation, that, that he said, come to me, you that labor and are heavy laden, right, and I will give you rest, right? Come to me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That we would, if we were saved that way because we came to him, it, 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 I mean, we've heard it many, many times, but how about we walk that way? How about we live the same way we were saved, right? And, and it is, again, because we... we we, we, when, you, when you're not acknowledging the power of God, it's going to be many times, it's not always this, but many times it's just because you see, you're, you're looking at your qualification. Like, I'm doing this because I believe that I can. Right? What a horrible way to live, right? I'm, I'm doing this, why are you doing this? Because I think I can. So basically what you're saying is, you're going to live out the rest of your life only doing what you think you can do. Right? That's a pretty mediocre, sucky little existence, right? That you're going to just do whatever you think you can do. Well, then for, just forget about the power of God, right? Isn't that how so many people, that's how the world lives. They live by what they can do, and if they can't do it, then that's it. But that's not what we have. We have this treasure in earthen vessels in us, so the power may be of God and not of us. So that means that our day-to-day -day living doesn't look like what we can do. It looks like what he can do. That, that's a totally separate proposition, right? What he can do, not what we can do. But again, our thinking, the majority of the time, is not like that. I do what I believe that I'm, and then, or, or we'll use this as, as, as an excuse. Well, yeah, but it's not just me. It's the person that's hiring me, right, that they, you know, how are you going to prove it to them what you can do, right? But, but that, this, I mean, we could start using all kinds of examples, right? But Joseph was in a prison, okay? okay? He was in a prison. It didn't matter. And he went from the prison to being second in command to Pharaoh. So come on. You, you, we have even written examples about how you can go from being a prisoner, which is basically a nobody, right, to being second in command to Pharaoh. That, no, yes, God is the one that does that, right? You, people don't just do that, but God does that. God will raise you up to preeminence, right, along with him because the power is of God. So just it's just, it's just a shifting a shifting in our mentality to be able, as you behold the glory of God, you, you really keep learning. You say, you know what, Lord? This is what I have on the inside of me, right? This is what I have on the inside of me. Look at the inheritance that I have in me because look at what you have. Like, look at how you operate. Instead of seeing yourself going into an interview and seeing how you're going to react to the questions that you're asked, how about if we said, Lord, Lord, let me look at you and let me see, like, how is it that you operate? Right? What, look at the wisdom that you have and, and rely when you walk into a, an interview, Lord, I'm relying on your wisdom. I'm relying, Lord, on your mind on the inside of me to speak and to say the things that need to be said, to speak and say the things that need to be said, and knowing that you have the power also in me to do it. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reform Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this unpopular message to the world. If you'd like to support Reform Church, you can do so at reforminus.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reforminus.com.